I recently analyzed over 500 YouTube videos, 501 to be exact. Now, these videos have accumulated over 20 billion views combined. I looked at these videos across 98 channels and just looked at the most popular videos from these channels. Now, the data was segmented in a lot of ways, but I'm gonna break down the analysis for you in a way that anyone can understand, and I will make recommendations towards the end of this video based on what I saw. Now we're gonna go through things like thumbnails, titles, we're gonna even talk about the emotions that people felt at the beginning of these videos because I used an AI software that does that, which I'll tell you more about later. But there's a lot of really interesting stuff here and I'm so excited to share it with you because it opened my eyes a lot and I hope it does for you too. So without further ado, let's get into it. Something that I forgot to add that you're supposed to add to every video you do is a proof point. So I. We'll start by introducing myself. A proof point is basically why someone should trust you. What qualifications do you have and why should they listen to the things that you're saying? So my name is Laura Mai. I started off my career in a business analyst position in employer branding, which if you don't know what that is, is basically marketing and human resources. So I did a lot of data projects there. I also did a lot of data projects in university, was top of my class in statistics, Asian math, you get the picture. And then I went on to be a behavioral design consultant, which is applied behavioral psychology and marketing and that's why I love data so much so I hope you enjoy this and I hope it's helpful so before we get into the data itself I want to talk about how the data was collected because the data was collected over the period of August 2024 to September 2024 and I say that because obviously because these videos are so popular if you go back to the data likes are gonna be more views are gonna be more and also People are always testing titles and thumbnails. For example, the popular podcast, Modern Wisdom, changes their title up to 80 times up to six months after the video is posted. So if you go back to the data sheet, which I'll put in the description, and you see that a video is not accurate compared to the sheet, it's because of the timing. It's because these videos are still live. And just know that at the time of doing the data, it was correct. Something else that you're supposed to add that I forgot to add was asking people to subscribe, but honestly, I won't only want you to subscribe if you actually like data, if you find this helpful. So if you do find this helpful, then definitely subscribe if you want more data-backed projects. But other than that, just feel free to take this as it is. I love putting this stuff out there and I hope you enjoy it. So if you scroll through the PDF, which I'll also put in the link below, it's, it's all on the same landing page on my website. But if you scroll through the data sheet, you'll see all the creators that I went through. There are 98 in total. The ones highlighted in green are in the business category because a lot of this report is geared towards people who do like business videos or podcast videos because that's what I'm into. So if we look past that, we get to the data highlights. And on the data highlights, the most interesting to, thing to me is the times that come up. So you see that the overall average of the 501 videos is 35 minutes long. You see business videos are significantly longer at 66 minutes long. And then you see the median set of data. You can see on the table, it says no outliers. That just means I removed the top 25% of videos and the bottom 25% of videos. So we just got a good number of what was in the middle of the data. And the average time for that is around 40 minutes. And then the interesting thing to me is that the channel outliers, which means these videos performed 100 times greater than the average views on that channel, they were around 19 minutes. And why this is significant is if you've heard of TED Talks, TED was formed by the idea that the human attention span is around 20 minutes. So I find it very interesting in a data set of 501 videos that the channel outliers would all be around that 20 minute mark. Next, we have two graphs. And the first graph talks about subscribers per video. And now the predictive model is only for channels with around 700 to 800,000 subscribers. And it is a positive correlation by about 1,500 subscribers per video. But if you see the R squared value on this graph, it's very low, which means that this model is not entirely predictive, which that just goes to show that people like Alex Hermazi, they have like 2,000 something videos on their channel. Mr. Beast has way less than that. I'll put the exact number here. But Quantity does not always lead to quality, so it's worth thinking how much time can I put into one video, but also knowing that 
if you do put a lot in, there is that positive regression analysis. So it's about finding the balance that works for you and just knowing that there's not even a model that can predict it for the best YouTubers in the world. So just go for it. The next thing we have is time versus views. There is a slightly negative correlation here, but the R value is even smaller here. So when you talk about an R squared value, it's zero to one. That's what we're looking for. One means it's a very predictive model. Zero means it's not a very predictive model. <laughs> and this is like 0. 0.00001. But I think with that being said, what we can take away from that is there is no too long. There is only too boring. But then also take into account the average earlier from the channel outliers, which is around 19 minutes. If you look at this graph as well, there aren't that many dots above the 100 minute mark. And that just goes to show you it is harder to make long content that is very, very good. Next, we have thumbnails. Overall, if you look at the overall category of thumbnails, which is just all the videos together, you can see the top five videos are Ariana Grande. She was pretty much the only music artist I did, but her videos obviously have a billion streams. What's very interesting about her videos though is obviously they also have a very low engagement rate because the people watching this video are the same people watching it over and over and over again. But if you look at the overall thumbnails, you can see that they mostly feature one person and that they're very, very colorful. Now I want you to also take note, what isn't there? Oh God, I feel like a school teacher. Words, words aren't there. There's one thumbnail that says 100 words and then you've got the Vivo logo. Other than that, no words on any of the top performing thumbnails which to me is crazy because you think about how much time goes into the copy on a thumbnail all the top 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 performing videos don't have it they just focus on one person now i'd say this is a good strategy for a very large channel but as we're going to get into later if you're not as well known it's more about selling an idea that people know about so if we scroll down Next category that we have are the highest engaging videos, which just means that these videos have the highest view to like ratio. And you can see women are more represented here. They are eight out of 16 of the videos. And when we look at these videos though as well, there's a little bit more copy and there are four out of 16 of them are before and afters. Now, these are just general observations. You can still see that most of them do only feature one person. And the, the fourth before and after, by the way, it's kind of unconventional. If you look at Simon Squibb's video where it goes zero to one million, that to me is a before and after because that shows the result of the video, what you can expect to get out of it. Now, if we scroll down one more, you've got your business videos. Now you'll notice with the business videos, there's a much higher black point, which just means that all the videos are quite dark. You'll also notice that most of the top videos are TED Talks. Right, and the reason that people could be going on to TED Talks is these videos are like 10, 11, 12 years old, right? So it could just be that people see that they have millions of views and there's this thing called social proof, which if you wanna know more about that, go to Robert Cialdini's work, it's really, really good. But just because people see that people have millions of views, they might just assume that the video is good, even if the thumbnail is not that great. But again, this goes in line with the same trend that we've been seeing earlier, where it's just one person, no words. You've got the TED branding. But other than that, it's pretty much the same as the rest of them. If you look at the bottom as well, again, I think this is so funny because Lex Fridman's podcast, look at his podcast covers. Do you have any idea? Diary of a CEO tests like hundreds and hundreds of thumbnails per video with different copy. This guy just pops on a face, a name, <laughs> episode number and then Lex Fridman, which all of this to me is just showing the power of brand, right? So it might not necessarily be the absence of copy that is driving these videos forward, but rather the brands themselves. If we look at the wider trends between all of these channels, the what I saw is that a lot of the very popular YouTubers now, they got famous by doing something like seven or eight years ago. That's how they got all their views. That's how they got all their followers. And now they can just post a video and people know who they are. But if you look back a little bit, they had to capitalize on trends. So it's worth thinking, how can you grow your brand to the point where your face matters more than the actual idea? 
because people already have an emotion towards you and they already know what you represent. Now, if we scroll down to the channel outliers, you're gonna notice there's more copy here because these are the videos that made people stand out. And that's why I said, get to the point where your face matters more than the idea because in a lot of these videos, the idea matters more than the face. You can see an exception to this is Kendall Jenner. And I also find it very interesting. I randomly put these thumbnails up. The rest were like the highest performing of that category, but with these, because they were all 100X times the channel average, just put them together. And you'll notice that the video of Kendall Jenner, the one from the Ellen show, the one from Vox of the Sniper, and then the one on the bottom left-hand corner from, I believe it's Mega Builds, they all have the same shade of blue. And I don't know if it's just because blue is more appealing, like a lot of these thumbnails had blue in them, but something to consider. Maybe if you want your video to stand out a bit, you could try using blue. YouTube has the ABC thumbnail tester now. So the really cool thing about any of the recommendations that I give about thumbnails, they're super low risk to try they're free to try and you just need to use this backend tool from YouTube. So next we have stuff about titles. Overall, these titles are just for the business videos, these title observations, but there are actionable things like how to, you know, they made it timely. So in 2024, words like mastery, etc. But when you create a title, what I notice with these videos is you can either use contrast, so say Mr. Beast's like $1 versus $100,000 whatever videos, or you want to make a bid. You wanna think of your thumbnail and your, and your title like an ad. And you like if you don't know anything about advertising, basically you want people to know what your product does and you want that, that like sect of people to be the people that need it. So being very, very clear with the thumbnail and then with the title and leaving a sense of curiosity and maybe even hope be like, could this be the solution to my problem? That is the key to having a good thumbnail or a good title. So when I go down again, we will see the emotional analysis, which I find so interesting. I use my friend's program. So if you scroll down again, you'll see the emotional analysis. And so the emotional analysis came from my friend Ian in London. He runs this company called David Rory Sutherland, recently invested in it. And what it does is it predicts the emotions that people are gonna feel when they watch your videos. Now, across the top five business videos, people felt the emotions of interest, strongest, and I'll put it all up on screen, the top five emotions that they felt. And the two negative ones that they felt were boredom and confusion. And I took another influencer, I'm not gonna say who, but when I compared their five top videos to this reel of top business videos, they were the same emotions. They felt the same thing. Now, if you wanna check out these videos, again, I will put them in the landing page that's going to be in the description of this video and you can see what video is highlighted. The other really cool thing is if you wanna check out the graphs for each of these individual emotions, you can check out the seconds on the video where people felt those things go to the video and see exactly what was said if you want to elicit that same emotion. I also wanna point out again that the two negative emotions here were boredom and confusion, and you wanna avoid those two as much as possible. I'd recommend going and watching a Mr. Beast video if you wanna know how to make a video at the beginning absolutely crystal clear on what the concept actually is. So now let's just get into the recommendations and the things that I didn't see. So some recommendations I would have for channels in general would be to see if you can capitalize on having almost mid form content. I know that we have short form on social media, we have long form on YouTube, but something around that three to four minute mark. Now I'm not like, this came from Ariana Grande, right? The fact that she was in the top five, but it's the idea of repeatability. So what I mean by that is I'm not telling you to go make a music video, although a lot of the really popular YouTubers now, you'd be surprised how many of them got famous off of music videos. But what I'm saying is have something that people share, it's quick, and you can listen to it over and over again. Another thing that people did in the workout space was they would post quick workouts and those were their most popular videos because people were watching those things over and over again. So it's worth thinking, what video can I make that's like three or four minutes long to reduce the amount of friction it takes someone to watch it because they're like, oh, that's not that much time investment and I feel like I'll get a good payoff off of it. 
And how can you make it repeatable? Because in behavioral economics, there's this thing called the mirror exposure effect or frequency bias, which just means that the more you watch something or the more you see someone, the more likely you are to like it. So if you want to grow your brand, if you want to grow your presence, people have to see your face a lot. So how can you get them to want to see your face a lot? You create a shorter video with a payoff that they will want to watch a lot. Another thing that you can do is create bingeable videos. So say if I were to break down this video into three or four minute sections and it was like part one, part two, you see that on TikTok a lot. If you did something like that and made it lead into different sections or you had different series of three to four minute videos that were all very, very similar and bingeable, I think that's another way to capitalize on that effect. The next thing that you can do is do collaborations. <laughs> I didn't mention this in the rest of the data, but when I was looking at people's channels, especially people like Emma Chamberlain or any of those like TikTokers, James Charles, Logan Paul, anything like that, collaborations blew them up. You think about the TikTok house and stuff, people do that stuff because it works. People put celebrities on their podcasts, on their YouTube channels because it works. So collaborate as much as you can. Don't be fake, don't make fake friends, I would say, but collaborate with people in line with you and bring each other up. Really create that sense of community within people who are creating the same as you. And then last but not least, I would say if you are already an existing creator and you have a lot of content out there, something that you can consider doing is Gordon Ramsay did this, and that's where I got this idea, where he had a highlight of all the best moments on his shows. And I know that a lot of you watch those like, comedy videos like probably like i do where people it's a very long chain of comedy videos all in one video it's like payoff after payoff after payoff so doing some sort of compilation video would be something else that would be very very cool when i was writing these recommendations it's very funny as well because one of the other things i thought about was live audience and so you got collaboration and live audiences especially big collaborations and you don't have either of those things very much in the business space besides ted um, and then Stephen Bartlett the other day, he, I was watching a, a podcast video from him and he was like, for our 10 million subscribers, we're going to have a live audience of four people. I was like, did I just, that's so raven this, that's crazy. But anyways, that's my recommendations. Hope you had a good time. I'm going to leave again the stuff right here and see you next time.